going. Can you guys hear me though? Like, is it clear? I'm not like skipping. Okay. Because I'm in the basement in my new ugly office in this old house. Just the office. The rest of it was gross. Um, but I um, also have my kids up there, my husband, and he is like laying it down. So I apologize now if you hear some of it. Okay. So I am going to talk to you guys real quick on exactly what I did to hit director in four months. So um, kind of my story, I, um, when I joined, I was four or five months pregnant and I had an 18 month old. Um, I had thought about doing Sensi for a couple years and I just didn't think I'd be good at it. I didn't know anybody. I didn't talk to anybody. Um, I mean, I didn't hang out with anybody besides like my mom and my grandma. Like I did not have like this big circle. I was not popular, nothing like that. And I also, well, my firstborn was actually born sleeping. So my son passed away on his due date. So I, here I am, I have anxiety, I have depression, I have um, all these issues from that. So like, I am a nut, like when it comes to my kids from that. I am terrified of stuff happening to my kids. So I couldn't work outside the home. Like I tried to work when my child, my first daughter was young and I would have panic attacks at work. Like I physically could not work. I could not leave her. And here I am pregnant again and we are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, my husband worked full time. He was a manager. He made good money, but I mean, it was just enough to scrape by. And I wanted something more. I knew there had to be something else out there. Um, I considered learning how to sew and selling stuff. Look at Jennifer. Like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm not into crafts at all. So I was just like desperate. I didn't know what to do. But I knew I loved Sensi. And for the longest time, I didn't even know you could like join it. Like I bought it on eBay because um, I thought that's where you got it. I didn't even realize it was like a website until I saw somebody selling it on Facebook and she didn't even ask me to join. I, like I approached her and then I was like, Hey, like, can anybody do that? And so she actually told me about it and I was like, nah, that ain't for me. And I went on a couple more years, still kind of thinking about it, but I would watch her. And like the one thing she did do was follow up with me. And when I would buy stuff from her, like during the holidays, she would like send me a thank you card. She would, she added me to her VIP group and kept me updated on specials. I didn't even have any money to buy anything, but she offered it. You know, she let me know when there was a sale and sometimes I could con my mom into buying us stuff. Like I didn't even have money to buy Sunsy. So finally one day I just went to her website and I joined and it was my husband that actually said, just do it. You buy the stuff every time you find it at the mall. Yeah, people were selling at the mall. Also, that's something you're supposed to do. And I didn't know and I was buying it for a month. So <laughs> I um, joined and my husband's like, you know what? What's the worst thing that can happen? Put it on the credit card and make your $99 back. And then if you get a bunch of free Sensi, then you'll have a stockpile. And then, you, you know, you never know unless you try. So I went ahead and joined, announced it. And I woke up at four o'clock in the morning having a panic attack, wondering if I could cancel it because I was like, I just spent $99 I don't have. So I was like, well, you got to figure this out. I'm going to do something. So I just started having fun with it. Um, I like, I didn't even reach out to my sponsor. I was just doing my own thing. I didn't really know what was, you know, what I was supposed to do or not do. I just took my guide and I read it from front to back a hundred times. Like I studied it like a Bible. I um, saw that there was a shooting star award. So I was like, okay, time to start a launch party. And we didn't even have you no know, first things first checklist or anything like that. I just saw, I had to sell $500 and I got a shooting star award. So I made an online party and I just started talking to everybody. I started sharing why I joined. Um, I just started sharing all the things and I hit my shooting star, like on the 15th day, it was cutting it really close. And I was like, whew. May, and then I saw there was certified and I was like, well, I don't want to get paid at 20% this month. I want to get paid at 25%. So I pushed and I certified 
And then somebody saw me on Facebook. Like I had no idea what to post or not to post. I just knew I'm going to post something about Scentsy every single day. So that way people know I sell it, but I don't want to be salesy. So I'm just going to kind of like nonchalantly mention it. Like I love this spray or, you know, whatever the thing was. And it got people seeing it and people saw, I love the products and it was really exciting. So a girl messaged me a screenshot that she joined my team and she's like, Hey, I don't know what you're doing over there, but I've done direct sales and it was not fun. So let's do this. And I'm like, Oh, well that sucks that you joined me. Cause I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and, um, but I was like, whatever, I'll go for it. So then the next month I was like, okay, I'm certified. Now I am going to actually ask people to join now. Like, let's see if people will actually join me if I ask them. So if I just started doing the join host by, I would ask somebody to join. And if they didn't want to join, then I'm going to ask them to host a party to get their stuff for free. And if they still don't want to do that, then okay, I'll get them the special, I'll get them the six pack of bars. Um, you know, I still try to upsell. So I just went with that. And by the end of my second month, I was we went on to, I looked at the incentive trip. And when I started that August 1st, I was a brand new certified consultant. And I was looking at the trip and it was the top 100 to Africa or Punta Cana. And I was like, Colt, look at this. I could go to on a beach. Like, yeah, could you see us on the beach? And he goes, and you know, he's kind he believes in it because he's, you know, I paid the car payment with my first check. So he's like, yeah, that is pretty cool. But I mean, come on, how many people actually earn that? And I was like, oh, just for fun, let's just tell everybody we're going to earn it. So that way people will want to join me because they're going to think I'm going on a beach trip. So I just started pushing for it. And by the end of that incentive, I promoted to director at the end of November. So I joined in July and promoted to director. I end up earning... Um, the top level for the trip, I would say like month three. And then all of a sudden I saw this new tracker on there and it said like number 80 out of 100. And I'm like, what? I was like, Colt, we're in the top 100. And I was just like, oh, I'm not even going to be able to go on that, but I'm going to tell everybody that I earned it. And I didn't go, but I did earn it. So I just keep pushing and pushing. So I hit director with 19 people and guys, that wasn't enough. So December came and it was slow and it slowed down a lot. And I said, it doesn't matter. Just keep talking to people. And I told all my team, I said, you know, put your orders in before the Christmas deadline and then just keep offering to everybody. Just keep talking about the opportunity we need to build. I had leads under me. I, you know, I was like, you guys just need to build your teams. So we just spent that whole month building and talking to people about joining and nobody said yes. And I was like, I know they're not, but just keep talking to them. And after they catch up from Christmas, they'll join, just have the conversations now. So January 1st came, we we're a team of 19. And so December, 2016 was the only month I have never been paid at title. And so January 1st came and it was $49 to join. And we went from a team of 19 to a team of 49 that month. I promote or I recruited seven of them personally and I had an emergency C section midway through the month and I earned annual mentor that month and top 100 to Africa. Like I was in the hospital, like how, like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to do this? I have seven people to go home and train. <laughs> um, but we did it. And that is like the biggest thing is it can't be complicated. If it's complicated, you're not going to do it. If it's hard, you're not going to do it. If, um, now this business isn't easy, but it's simple. And if you make it simple, you're consistent and you have goals, you could do anything. Like I don't have eight hours a day. I now have three kids, so I have been paid at title every single month since that January 2017. Um, we now have over 200 people. I was paid at title yesterday. Um, 
like for this month, um, we've been hitting star numbers for the past year. Like last month we did like 46,000 um, GWV. So that's like $60,000 in PRV. Um, it, but I don't have, I've had a third kid and I don't have time to sit here and work eight hours a day. Like nobody does. If anybody is doing that much work, you're not doing the right work because every director, star director, superstar director, any of these people that you see, none of them did like a handful of really elaborate things. Like it wasn't one big event or one big amazing sample party or any one in particular thing. It was, it's all the sum of consistent, small, simple things. So you gotta have a system. Like I have like an hour a day to work my business, about an hour a day. And I don't do it all at once. Like I am talking, like I will do my Maven in the bathroom. Um, I will listen to my, like I'll listen to training. So I'm taking a bath or doing the dishes. I will um, listen, to, listen to books while I'm driving my daughter to preschool, to gymnastics, to dance, all the things. And by the way, we would not be able to afford to live in the house that we just purchased this year or have my daughter in anything if it wasn't for Sensi. Like, it's the real deal, guys. Um, it's completely changed our life. Like, my husband is talking about quitting his job next year because at the point I'm at right now, I'm making more than we used to both make together and I'm at a director. Just imagine the next levels. Um, but anyway, side note, insert income disclosure there, but um, it's simple things that you do over and over again. So you have to have a system. And when I first joined, I had a system. I'm sorry. I hope you guys can't hear that. Or if you do, I hope it's not too loud. Um, you have to have, simple systems. Like I had a huge goal. I would set every single month. I would sit down and be like, okay, I want to make a $2,000 check next month. Like we need $2,000 if we're going to have Christmas. And so I would sit there and I would figure out, I need to have X amount of PRV. I need to have X amount of recruits. I need to have X amount of GWB to be paid at title or promote or whatever it was. And I would sit there on the like 31st or the first of every month and write like all these things out. And then I would set goals like I want to certify X amount of people. I want to hit X, help X amount of people hit lead and so on. And I would make like these stupid high goals, like three, 4,000 PRV. And guess what, guys? I didn't always hit those. But when my goal as a director, like I had to have 500 to get paid. Like my team could sell a million dollars. And if I don't have my 500, I don't get paid at title. So instead of me hitting having a goal for 500 and hoping I hit that I'll have a goal for like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. And even if I don't come close to that, I will be way above 500. And I set goals for like five recruits a month. And even if I don't get five recruits a month, I have to do have, I look at how would I get five recruits a month? Like I'm going to have to have like 50 conversations. And like legit conversations where we're talking back and forth. So I might have to reach out to 100 people and maybe 50 of them will respond to me and maybe five will join. Like I need, I look at what I actually need to do to hit all these things. And then I break it down and I just would do it. And I had that system when I first started, like I made myself read inspirational books um, about network marketing, all the things. I would listen to motivating podcasts. I would set these goals and I knew where I was aiming. Like when I sat down to work in my business, I knew what I was working on. Like I knew I needed to do five basket parties. So I didn't just sit here and be like, oh, and then get stuck in the Facebook scroll. Like I knew what I needed to do. And then I got confident and I earned annual mentor award a couple of times. And then I earned all the trips. And then I was like, this is cake. I can do this in my sleep. So then I just started doing whatever the heck I wanted. And I would get, I quit partying. 
I got my 2000 PRV. I can get 2000 PRV a month just from follow up because I've had great customer service. So I would get my 2000 PRV. We get paid at title about mid month and I check out and guys, your team does what you do. Your team, when I'm selling a lot, my team sells a lot. When I recruit all the people, my team recruits all the people. When my team sees me get up on stage shaking like a leaf, they're like, wow, Andrea does scary things. I came back the next day after that and my team was going live for the first time. They were having conversations for the first time. They see I'm a human, I'm scared, and I get uncomfortable. And then I encourage them to get uncomfortable. So they're gonna do what you do. And last year, my fall was slower than my, my spring. And like spring is usually the slow time. Like I had star numbers, was doing amazing, was on my way to star director. And then fall, I checked out. And it like completely almost crumbled. Like you have to be consistent. Like you're never done. Like you always need to be recruiting. You always need to be selling. You need to be sharing. So I got out of having a system because I thought I didn't have a system. And I, cause I see all these really complex, crazy systems. And I never realized that I actually did have a system. My goal setting and mapping out what I needed to do. And those check marks I was doing was a system. And when I quit doing that, my business fell apart. Like, yeah, I earned annual sales and stuff, but like I barely earned the incentive. Like every single year I have earned like double the incentive. Like if we needed 30,000 points for incentive, I'll have 60. And here I barely earned Marco Island for one. And um, it was just from like the small things I did have in place stayed consistent. And it took me a long time. It took me about January. I woke up. I was about to have my third baby. And I was like, what are you doing? And I had to wake up and it took me all spring and summer to get back to where I was. It, and now we are like, it's just blowing up like crazy, but it takes a long time. So anything you're doing today is really in the next 90 days going to show its labor. So you can't just spend this week having recruiting conversations and then being mad that you didn't have 10 recruits this month. Like you, it's small little things. It's not just one huge day of you following up with 100 people. You once a month, you'd be better off following up with five people twice a week. Like it's giving yourself little, giving yourself big goals, but simple daily tasks. So I just had to actually completely like rewire my life to three kids in a new house it's still we still own the old house and it's a huge mess so i had to actually sit here and look at what i need to do not what everyone else is doing like i quit looking at what other people were doing and i had to look and see what my business needs so i took ideas from everybody so you guys are all seeing the systems going around so they have um like daily things there's weekly things and monthly things so i took all of that and i made an andrea system because here's the thing, when I have weekly tasks, I either try to do them all on Monday and then get burned out, shut off, or I wait till Friday to do them and then I can't finish them. Same with monthly tasks. I either try to do them all at once or I put them off and then all of a sudden I got 20 things to do on one day. So I had to break it down and like Monday is my day. Um, so I do stuff with like PRV. That's the day I will, um, like here, for example, I go live on Facebook about a, a product. I do, if I'm doing any type of emails for my customers, that's the day I'll make it. Um, anything like that. I, it's my day to work on my PRV because I need to work my business first before I could go help my team or anything else. And then Tuesday's my team day. So Tuesdays is the day that I do Facebook live trainings. Um, it is the day that I check in with team members. It is the day that I do coaching calls. So I do coaching calls three weeks out of the month. Um, the first week I'm too busy focusing on like getting my basket parties and stuff out. And like today I had to like print labels, stuff like that. Cause I have extra time on Tuesdays. Then Wednesday is like my Wahoo day. So that's the day that I shout out people and I shout out different things on different Wednesdays. Um, that is like tomorrow, 
I will make my um, postcards for the month. And then Thursday is my party day. Like I get a basket party out every Thursday. I put a new party on my calendar every Thursday. And that's, that's my day to make sure I have parties. Sometimes I only have to follow up with one person. Sometimes I might have to reach out to 20 people to do that. So that is my Thursday. And then Friday is my recruiting day. That is the day that I follow up with anybody, like anybody that I talk to about joining, they go down in a notebook um, and I keep track of our conversations and when I'm going to follow up next. So Friday, I go through that notebook and see who's ready to be followed up with. Um, you know, if we have a special going on, I'll go through that whole notebook and everyone that told me it was too expensive, then I follow up with them. Like I don't get 10, 15 recruits in one month during these specials just because I post a flyer on Facebook. It's because I have consistently talked to tons and tons of people over time. And then when there's finally a really good deal and I let them know, it's like, okay, I guess I'll do it then. Um, and then, so that's the day I also reach out. I try to reach out to at least 10 new people. And that could be people that I have booked parties with before, my customers, someone I have an actual relationship with, no cold messaging. So it's just doing those little things over and over and over again. And none of those things are going to seem like much. Like me this Friday talking to 10 people about joining and maybe one being interested doesn't seem like much. But if I do that every single week over a year, that's probably 20 people that are going to join. That's annual mentor. Um, as long as I'm working with, you know, doing those coaching calls on Tuesdays. So as long as when they're joining, I'm training them and doing coaching calls with them, like doing one coaching call with somebody doesn't seem like much, but when you're doing one with them every single month, uh, that person promotes to certify, they earn sensational start, they earn lead star and above. And honestly, I just started um, coaching calls in September and the people that are doing coaching calls with me have been promoting like crazy have higher PRV than they've ever had. They're recruiting like rock stars. And honestly, this is probably the first time I've actually been on track to building other directors. I've always had star director numbers, but as of right now, by doing these coaching calls right here, I can tell that I am actually building other directors from them because I haven't efficiently been teaching stuff. Like sometimes we just think people know and they don't always. Um, so my biggest advice, um, well, for one, I want to say any of you can earn that trip. Even if you started yesterday, like you can earn this trip. If you buckle down and you set goals, um, any of you could hit director by the end of next month. Like, I don't care what level you're at. I don't care if you're a lead consultant. If you buckle down and you are doing all the things to recruit, if you are training your people that you're recruiting and you are sharing Sensi and not selling it, and you are sharing the opportunity and how it's going to help other people, you're going to recruit people. And if you're having fun, people are going to want to be a part of that. And when you keep this simple and you repeat it over and over, it's going to multiply into big things. And when you keep it simple, you will want to do it. If you make it hard, you're not going to want to do it and you're not going to do it. And if you are making it really hard and you're doing like all these crazy things, your team is going to look at you and going to be like, I don't want to do that. That is, that's too much work. I already got enough going on. I have a full-time job. I couldn't do what Andrea does. Yes, they could. But when I'm sitting here making it look harder than it is for myself, that's hurting my team as well. It's same with people that are wanting to join you. If you're sitting here complaining that you have to do this or that, or you're making like these crazy um, flyers and these crazy amazing samples, that's really nice that you're doing that for your customers, but you're also making it look really hard because they're going to look at that and be like, I'm not artistic. I couldn't do all this. Like you got to like meet in the middle of all that. Um, it's keeping it simple and consistent. That's really all I got. I hope that helps somebody.
I love it. No, I thought it was so good. And you know what, you know what I love about everything Andrea said tonight is that I think a lot of times when you're striving for a director or you're really trying to build your business or you're trying to earn a trip or whatever goal you're trying to achieve, we're always looking for like a magic formula, right? Or a magic pill or some, or someone's going to say one thing that blows your mind and you're like, Oh, that's it. That's the secret. That's the key. And we're always looking for this quick express lane. You know what I mean? To whatever success you're looking for. And the fact is like, she couldn't have been, and we didn't even talk. I didn't say like, I want you to say this. Like I, I just asked Andrea if she could speak on her experience and what's happening. But like, I couldn't be more in tune with what she's saying. One of my most favorite quotes is success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. And that was literally <clears throat> the theme of everything she talked about. And what I loved so much about what she said is she said, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, and I repeat, right? And what she said is ev like every single person on this call can do. Every single consultant in Sensi can do. So here's, here, I took notes, okay? So she, she said, I, I use Maven to do follow-up. So that's follow-up right there. I listen to training, books, things like that. I set goals for my paycheck and then I break it down from there. She leads by example because your team reflects what you do and she stayed consistent. So all of those things are simple, small actions that she took, which means none of the things that she's doing require like a specific talent or they require you to be from a certain area or have a certain personality trait or have a certain amount of money or anything like that, right? None of the things that she does are so specific that it's only Andrea is going to be successful in this way. So what I love is that what she's doing is so incredibly duplicatable, right? So when someone does join her team, they look at her and look at what she's doing and they say, wow, I can do every single thing she's doing. Okay. Same thing for you guys. You can do every single thing that Andrea is doing and has done. You can do the follow-up. You can listen to training and books. Okay. You can listen to things that are, uh, that's self-care, that's self-education, that's filling your mind with good things. Right. Um, one thing that she literally said, I set goals and I write them down. Okay. Writing your goals down is so important. If you're not setting goals for yourself every month and not just setting them, but writing them down you're doing yourself a huge disservice. People who set and write down their goals are 80% more likely to achieve them than people who don't write them down. So first of all, if you're not setting them, that's where you need to start, okay? That's problem number one. But then if you don't write them down, you're just cutting your nose to spite your face kind of thing. There's no point in setting a goal and not writing it down if you only have a 20% chance of achieving it, right? So you're 80% more likely to achieve your goal just by writing it down. Here's the other thing I love. She didn't set goals of like sell 500. She said, I set big crazy goals like sell 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I set goals like recruit five people every single month. Those were her goals. And then she said, okay, I want to recruit five people. So I'm going to have to have 50 conversations. If I don't have 50 conversations, I'm going to have to reach out to 100, 150 people to get 50 people to respond to me, right? So she didn't reach out to five people, put all of her eggs in that basket, and then get butthurt or disappointed if someone didn't respond or didn't answer the phone or didn't respond to their text or called her weird, right? She didn't get upset about it. Because not all of her hope was laid in these five people. She understood the very basic math, the very basic, it's, a, it's like a formula, right? You want to recruit, you got to have 11 conversations. You want to have 11 conversations, you probably have to reach out to about 30, 40, 50 people to get to actually have 11 people who will engage with you, okay? And then she also said, it's not like, okay, I'm going to post or have these conversations and then someone's going to join it's a cycle. Sometimes it's 90 days, sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's years in the making, right? So there's an, there's an element of patience. And like she said, consistency over and over and over and over again, that you have to have in this business. There are going to be some people who will, Hey, join your team right now. But most people, 
it's going to be a process. If Andrea has 10 or 15 people join during a joint special month, it's because she's been having those conversations with them already. She's been, she has planted and watered those seeds over time and they come to fruition during this kind of joint special. They might come to fruition during, during a normal $99 month. Our $99 kit is still an amazing deal. It's still an amazing deal. It's still a great time to join Sensi. Every time is a great time to join Sensi. You know what I mean? They, uh, there's someone always says like the best time to join Sensi was yesterday, but the second best time is now. You know? So I loved I loved everything she said because guys, there is no magic formula. Okay, you're not going to hear one thing that changes your life and blows your mind and you're like, boom, that's what I got to do. And this one thing is going to make me successful. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. It's many things working together and it's all of the right things. Okay, she kept it so simple. She's not like, hey, I did um, this crazy thing. And then I did this and then they created these flyers and then I created this script and then I did this marketing and then I, blah, 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 right. She kept it simple. I did follow up. I listened to training. I lead by example. I set goals. You know, I, I'm just, I'm like, I'm loving it. Also take notes. System is kind of a hot word in Sensi right now, like creating systems for your business. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are doing it. It is important that you have a system for your business. She, you can't force any other system on yourself. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience because I did it for many years. And then I said, screw it. I'm not going to do any systems because I'm not a systems person, right? And what I should have said is systems are hard for me. Systems are difficult for me, but I can do hard things, right? That's what I should have said. But instead I said, screw it. I hate systems. I'm not a systems person because I was trying to make everyone else's system work for me instead of being authentic and finding the way that I needed to work to be successful. So my system looks a lot like Andrea's, like Monday is this day, Tuesday is this day. And there's a lot of freedom and flexibility within that day, but it's still at least I'm getting all the things done. I'm just not like 10 a.m. I do this and 11.30 a.m. I do this and because I can't roll like that. But maybe you're like that. So roll that way if that's for you. Okay. Because the system that is going to work for you is the one that you want to do. Like she said, if it's too complicated, if it's not authentic to you, you just won't do it. Because honestly, if you've been trying to get to the director and trying to get to the director and trying to get promoted and trying to earn a trip, are you putting in the work really? Are you having 50 conversations with people that like actually back and forth conversations with people actually engaging? to try and get those recruits. And then once people join your team, are you building them up? Are you coaching them and helping them have a launch party, right? Or are you putting all of your eggs in one basket and getting really upset when one or two people don't, don't join your team that said, we're gonna join? That's what you gotta ask yourself. Are you really putting in the work? You don't have to work eight hours a day, like she said, but you do have to have focused time, income producing activities, keep it simple, don't complicate it. And what I used to tell my husband every day when he left for work, I used to say, make people want your job. Okay. Make people want your job. That's how you inspire teamies to grow and build. That's how you recruit. You make people want your job. If it looks complicated or hard, or you get on your like, Oh, I got to do this today. Oh, I'm so busy. This is too much. My life is banana. You know, like if that's, if that's the message you're sending, no one wants to do what you do. Nobody. Is it fun? I never, ever, ever, ever use the word easy, ever. It's simple, not easy. Because you never want to give someone the impression that, hey, just join this magic business and boom, you're going to easily make $500 a month. No, there's work involved. <laughs> okay. Set the right expectations, make it look fun, and do it consistently over and over and over and over again. Andrea's journey was four months to director and then just continuing to build there. And like she said, there's highs and lows. There are times where she lost focus and like things started to crumble. That's part of everybody's journey and that's okay. But she recovered, which is pretty cool. She could have let it like kill her business and be like, I'm done with this, forget it. But she recovered. So let that be an inspiration to you. If you're going through a hard time or a time where you've lost focus or a time where things are shrinking or a times where things aren't, aren't connecting, you can recover. 
you can start again. You can start fresh. You can find new ways to make it interesting and fun for you. So I love it. I love it so much. Andrea, I do have a question for you. What would you tell to a leader who is leading by example, like you talked about your team reflects what you do, who is leading by example, who's a top performer, who's crushing it, who's doing their thing, but they feel like they are just pulling teeth with their team. They feel like they can't get their team to engage with them. What would you tell to that person? Oops. I would tell them because I've been there more than once um, to just keep going. Um, reward the things that you want repeated. So if you want activity on your page, I actually shout out um, once a month people that are like on the, there's actually a thing on your team page where you could see who um, contributes and there's actually top contributors. So I will shout out like the top people, like, you know, in that first week of the month where there's really not a whole lot else going on. Um, so I shout that out, like, thanks for being part of our community. And um, when somebody does something awesome, I shout it out. Um, and it doesn't even have to be just top sales, but I do, you know, focus on that stuff. So when people, I focus on like cards and shout outs and stuff like that to top sales and top recruiters and things like that. But also I always just, instead of wasting my time and my energy on what people are not doing, I just find more people that will. Like I will reach out to everybody, but if I just have nobody engaging, then I'm just gonna add new people that will. Um, and also when you're recruiting a lot and adding to your team, people are excited. And like, I think that is one of the biggest things is when you start recruiting, they were like, well, look at her. And then they see all these new people like hitting shooting star and hitting sensational start. And it's exciting. And so it like kind of, when you recruit, it kind of gets everybody going. Like anytime that there's new people joining the team, there's fresh people on there asking questions. And so people start getting more engaged and right. it just builds excitement. Yeah. And that, that momentum is really good. And what, what would you tell um, consultants who are maybe struggling with recruiting or they feel like recruiting is difficult for them? Um, where, where are you finding your recruits and what kind of, how are you starting the conversation with people? I definitely go through spurts where I don't have any recruits and recruiting gets hard for me. So it's hanging on even when it's Anytime I feel like I'm having a hard time recruiting, I honestly just try to YouTube or like the aha moments page and I will just watch straight up recruiting videos and get different ideas and then try them. Um, there was one time I created a customer form and it was like I hadn't recruited anyone or had any parties in months and I was like, what am I doing? So I watched like a random video on YouTube and it was a customer form and I sent it to every single one of my customers and it just said, which, you know, your name, email, address, just their information and then your favorite product. And then um, it had, would you be ever interested in hosting a party? And there was different party options. And then there was, have you ever been interested in doing what I do? And it's like, yeah, I want to earn my kit for free or yes, sign me up, or no, I have more questions, or send me an opportunity packet. And so what I did is I sent it to every single customer I had, and I said, hey, I am updating my files, and if you fill this out, I'm doing a drawing for everyone that does it. And it got me like 30 parties, <laughs> and after I'd been asking and asking and posting and posting for people to have parties and nobody wanted one, and I got like, 15 people to start having conversations with me about joining none of them joined that day but they all started talking about it and that was at the end of March I did that and then I had all those parties in April and I did over 5,000 PRV that month and that's how I hit annual sales and then May came and that special dropped and all those people that I was already having conversations with joined and I had like well, some of them, I had like eight people join that month and then like five people the next month. And, um, it was just for trying something new. All I did is I just watched a video. So 
I have been there. So do not give up when you feel like you're stuck. You just got to try something new or just stay consistent. Um, I find people by, I kind of attract them to me. So I believe in attraction marketing and I share, you know, weekly something that has something to do with my business, but it's not directly asking people to join. And it doesn't have to be anything big. Like you getting paid and going to get your a pedicure with your mom is a big deal to some people. Like I got my first pedicure after joining Sensi, like in years. Like I hadn't had them before kids. Um, so something like that is a big deal. Sometimes going to scooters and getting a coffee or Starbucks, whatever, is a big deal. Like I will post that. Like it's payday. Like, cause that's a special treat. Back three years ago, I didn't get no $6 coffee. My husband would have killed me. Um, so little things like that are a big deal. And I just like constantly share stuff like that. So you kind of market yourself. And even when nobody is commenting on it, still keep doing it. As long as you're sharing other stuff too, and not just a sensey billboard, because people are going to see that stuff. And then they might not be interested right now and they might not come and engage with it. But all of a sudden, six months down the road, they talk about a post they saw six months ago that they did not even like. They are seeing it. And as long as you're not being spammy, people are looking at it. But people don't want to be hounded either. So if they don't got money right now, they're not going to engage on it. But just do that. Um, like constantly meet new people too. Like I meet somebody every single day, whether that is striking up a new conversation with somebody at my daughter's preschool that doesn't have any other mom she's talking to. So just talking about her daughter's backpack. I don't know, just talking to somebody about nothing related to Sensi, just starting a new relationship. And I don't go a lot of places. So I meet people in groups on Facebook. So I'm in all kinds of groups that target my personality. So like mom groups, breastfeeding groups, whatever you guys, dog be in that breed of dog group, breed done groups. And I just comment, engage on those things. And I just work on building a new relationship, whether it's a Facebook friend or someone I start talking to at church. I just make myself every single day, add one more person to my circle. And then over time, and you will find people that you can approach about the join opportunity and your customers your customers are all people you should be asking to join because they all have thought about it just like jennifer said that a few weeks ago it's true um even me to this day if i buy like a lipstick through a company i don't but if i did i there is stuff I have bought from other direct sales. I can't think of anything on top of my head. But if I buy something from them, I, I think, hmm, I wonder how much commission she gets for that. And things like that. Like, I do wonder. And I, oh, I guess I recently bought some workouts. Um, and I thought, hmm, I wonder what she actually does. Like, I have no interest in doing that, but I wondered. So, you know what? You just got to ask. So, if someone's buying stuff from you, they like Sensi, ask them. There's all kinds of opportunities, but it's always going to be no if you don't ask. That's what I'm going to say. Because somebody could have asked me years ago at the first house party I went to about 10 years ago, and I would have joined that day. But I thought, like, she owned Sensi. I didn't know. It was direct selling thing. <laughs> it's, uh, that, that's so good. Uh, most people aren't going to join unless someone asks them at some point, okay? And sometimes people have to be asked a dozen times before they finally say yes, you know? Um, so I love that. So she meets new people every day, whether it's on social media or in person, right? So having a goal of adding one person a day to your circle, I think that's so great. Um, and then your customers, absolutely. You should ask your customers if they want to join. Like if you're not asking your customers to host parties or join Sensi, like that's, that's your pool, you know? So people come into Sensi by buying the products and then eventually you want to get them to host a party and then eventually join. Like that's, that's sort of the life cycle <laughs> of a, a Sensi purchaser. Most people are introduced to Sensi by buying the product. So I love that. Um, and then, and then real quick, how would you start a conversation um, with someone? So 
what, what we're doing too is assuming that you have an existing relationship with a person and that your first um, contact with them or like sentence to them is not, hey, do you want to join Sensi? Okay. So if you notice, she said, I, I try to add one person to my circle every day, meet people who I have things in common with. She doesn't just say, hey, do you want to join my team? Or, hey, you should join my team. There's an existing relationship. So that needs to be where you start. Once you have an existing relationship, how would you start the conversation? It just depends on the person and the relationship. If it's somebody that's hosted a party, I just straight up say, why don't you join? Because you do, you just did exactly what I do. Yep. And instead of just getting free stuff, you could host your own parties when all these people need to reorder more wax and you're going to com get commission and free stuff. So that's a huge one. And now we have where they can actually earn the kit. Um, and then if it's a customer, it's like, girl, you buy this stuff all the time. Why don't you make money off your own sales? And then whatever else is just extra from there. Um, I just go into it like real easy. I almost kind of just tell them that like you should join. Like I don't say, do you want to join my team and go to Africa with me? I just kind of like, Hey, you should join. Like, why haven't you joined? Almost like, why are you not a consultant? Or they'll like, like everyone's doing this. Why aren't you doing it? Yeah. Why, why haven't you joined? Like you buy stuff all the time or especially if they refer somebody to me, it's like, you are actually an unpaid consultant right now. Like, what are you doing? Perfect. And so she doesn't, she doesn't paint pictures of grandeur, right? Like join Sensi and quit your job and like, um, you know, earn these trips. Like that, that's overwhelming for a lot of people. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's very to the point like, Hey, why don't you do this? Okay. That can be the best way to start a conversation about joining. It can be something like, I think you'd be really great at this. Okay. Like little one liners. Those are great ways to start conversations. Um, or you buy so much, like she said, you buy so much Sensi, why don't you just get a discount on it? Okay. Or you're referring people to me. You should be selling them Sensi. I mean, these kinds of things. So it's very matter of fact. It's very um, short, sweet to the point. And also every single time you're showing them their with them, their what's in it for me, their what's their what's in it for me. It's their best interest, right? So if they're, if they're referring people to you, you're like, yo, this is in your best interest to join because you're an unpaid consultant. Okay. Like these, these kind of things, show them they're with them. W I I F M what's in it for me. Okay. I loved it. Andrea, such good stuff tonight. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, it's so inspirational and, um, I'm like super grateful that you're in our lives and, that you're in Radiant Rockstars. And uh, I hope you guys were inspired too by what she had to say. Anyone have any questions for Andrea as we wrap up tonight? Emily said she loves how honest you are about all of it. So that's great. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, honey, can you, um, are you around honey? Can you pick a number between one and 28? 28. Oh, he likes to go extremes, either super high or super low. Zulma, Zulma, you win the prize tonight. <laughs> and I, um, I'm two weeks behind on prizes, so they'll all go out tomorrow. Okay, guys, sorry about that. So if you're like, hey, I won a prize before and I didn't get one, it's because you're on my list and they're going out tomorrow. <laughs> it's because we're selling our house and I have a baby and my life is nuts all of a sudden. <laughs> and we're moving, you know, all of that, so... Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for coming into Rockstar Rally. Hope this was valuable for you. Thumbs up. Yes. No. Good. Worth your time. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Love you guys. Have a great night. Rock out.